Hey guys, what's up? Aru. Happy New Year. The land of dreams, or more commonly known as Penakani, is a planet where you can basically take a vacation and dream of whatever you want. But what a lot of people don't know is that Penakani is literally built on the dreams of prisoners that were forced to work for the Aeon of Remembrances faction. So, welcome to another video of me speaking to my paralysis demons. Today, we're going over everything we know about Penakani, its location and history, its use of memories as well as their land of dreams, the people of Penacani and their hotel reverie, and finally, the guests and what their reasons for going to Penacani are. As always, timestamps below. Let's get started. Based on what we know from a representative of the family, Mr. Sunday, Penacani is found within the Asdana star system and is a planet that is universally known and reputable for spending holidays. Penacani goes by some pretty fancy names, like the Planet of Festivities and the Land of Dreams. The name Planet of Festivities comes from its festivals that have been held within the planet before, likely when the planet first found its refuge within the Aeon of Harmony. Shipei. Seemingly mentioned by Owlbert, Panikani has held other festivals before, but the current festival known as the Charmony Festival is the first that is openly announced to the public and is also the first festival where Panikani has invited multiple factions across the universe. Another thing that makes this festival different is linked to Panikani's other name, the Land of Dreams. Panacani's history is rooted on quite dark and muddy beginnings, and its very foundations lie in both dreams and memories that every citizen from Panacani still remembers. And Panacani has used those memories and dreams to create the planet that you see today, quite literally too. There's a saying that Panacani was built on dreams, that has been held as a factual statement because Panacani itself is literally built upon the dreams and memories of its ancestors as well as the events in its history. From the Reverie Hotel's dream-centered attraction to the planet's railway system that uses old prison cages as transport. Even the 12 dreamscapes that you can visit are likely tied to Panacani's memories of the past. A past that one of the upcoming characters, Black Swan, might have something to say about. Panacani used to be a prison planet of the IPC, and the name Panacani wasn't used until after it was saved from destruction after the planet was taken under Shipei. Long ago, the IPC relocated a huge number of prisoners to this planet. These relocated prisoners were made to gather and salvage an overflow of memory bubbles for the Garden of Recollection, a faction in the game responsible for the creation of light cones that we use in-game, as well as memory bubbles that we find within the Hertha space station, as well as sometimes in random places. Because of their tasks, prisoners would end up lost between reality and fantasy because of the nature of these memory bubbles. Their physical bodies would become heavy as metal, but their souls would feel as light as a bubble. These prisoners who were exposed to memory bubbles would slowly become linked to a collective consciousness within a dream, some of which seem to have become a part of memory bubbles itself. This long toil for collecting memories would go on until a Stellaron ended up in Penacani. The emergence of the Stellaron freed them from the IPC shackles as well as their forced labor with memory bubbles, but the destruction itself would be an equally bad end. Somewhere along that timeline, Akivili would connect this planet to its course of stars, or the Trailblaze. But to stop the planet from destruction, the people of this planet asked the Aeon Shipei for help to achieve peace for the planet. After peace was achieved, the planet was then named Panacani. Fast forward around, I don't know how many years, and you have the current Panacani inviting other factions to their festivals. This dark history is the sole reason why Panacani is so intricately linked to dreams, dreamscapes, and memories, as well as its current standing as a member of the family. Something about Panacani is its relation to Fuli, the Remembrance, and its factions when it was still a prison planet. The Aeon Fuli's philosophy is that records of events and happenings of the universe must be recorded in preparation for the rebirth after the destruction. And a faction of Fuli, the Garden of Recollection, is responsible for collecting as much of those records as possible. A notable member of the Garden of Recollection, is Black Swan and the Messenger in the Express. Both of them are known as Memo Keepers who have a mission to find the most precious memories and to make sure the universe is remembered. In addition, Penacani has what the Garden of Remembrance needed and made it into the holiday planet that it is. So we can expect the release of Black Swan to reveal more about Penacani's history, which would include some interesting exchange of words with Penacani's five great families, like Mr. Sunday, as well as have information on 
Fuli and the Garden of Remembrance. Dreams and memories within Panakani are also seen and found all over its city, or at least from the Reverie Hotel building itself. The Reverie Hotel is Panakani's main superstructure and is where one's dreams can be found. The planner ornaments of Panakani mention its actual terrain as an ever-changing and never-ending world that only one can dream of. This dreamland is likely found within the Reverie Hotel itself, or possibly from the quote-unquote bubbly drinks that one is given after entering the reverie. Whatever the initial start of dreaming actually is, I think that's when you'll really be in Penakani. Within these dreams are places called dreamscapes. These places range from 12 dreamscapes called moments, of which we only know three so far. The moment of daybreak with its underground tunnels, the moment of scorched sand and its vast fields, Finally, the moment of stars being a glittering stadium. Particularly, the moment of stars seem to speak of the same stadium from Hertha Space Station's memory bubble named Family. A grand theater filled with family members and multiple eyes wide open staring at Hertha, which was at the time you. Quick tangent, there's a wooden box within this memory bubble that mentions a similar event from a curio named Family Ties, which you can find in the simulated universe. Long story short, the escapee ended up in Shipei's creepy gatherings and asked a random question. And the so-called heavenly bodies that were venerating Shipei all looked at him with eerie smiles and wide eyes. Then they all spoke with the same single voice. Welcome. This is exactly why I don't like Shipei as well as Aeons in general. But I digress. If one wishes to go to these dreamscapes, then you can ride on Panacani's pseudo train system called spheroids that travel on dream seeking tracks. And once they enter these dreamscapes, the dream would then be adjusted and be unique to every individual in that dreamscape. I hazard a guess that we'll dream of something that's likely connected to our character as the trailblaze. The name spheroid sounds too close to a certain prescribed substance, but anyway, these spheroids start from a central state in Panacani, which seems to be transport cars that can either give you a tour around Panacani's 12 dreamscapes or just take you to a specific dreamscape of your choosing. But these bubble cars were actually once used as prison cells for inmates that collected memory bubbles long ago. And because these bubble cages were so embedded in those inmates of Panacani, as well as being so ingrained into their memories and dreams, they figured using the cages as transports would be a good fit for the land of dreams that they would later pioneer. Speaking of pioneers, we also have five great families, which are the main groups responsible for handling and overseeing Penacani. The Iris family, which showcased Miss Firefly, has performers and service personnel in the scenic areas and leisure facilities of Penacani. And the Bloodhound family, showcasing Mr. Gallagher, responsible for the Charmony Festival's security and likely of Panacani's security too. Although we still haven't seen the other three families and what part of Panacani they handle, Mr. Sunday and Miss Robin both have wings near the back of their heads as well as halo-like rings on top and behind them, ornaments and designs that both Shipei the Harmony and Anna the Order have. However, Miss Robin's talent for singing might be related to the songs of the Beyond the Sky Choir Maid, a faction devoted to Anna the Order, which could be a different family from Mr. Sunday even though they are siblings. A separate family for each sibling that might reflect the assimilation of Anna and Shipei. Finally, we have Misha, the bellboy of the Reverie Hotel who aspires to become an adventurer. He's also fond of sharing interstellar rumors within the Reverie, so we might know some interesting stories about other factions from him. As for his affiliation, he's likely part of Miss Iris's family due to him being a bellboy, but maybe he's in a different family that we don't know about yet. So we could either be missing one or two unknown families if we take into account Mr. Sunday and Miss Robin's possible family affiliation. Panacani is open to anyone in the universe who upholds benevolence and wishes to wander the sea of dreams. As such, its borders are open to both famous and infamous factions of the cosmos. I honestly can't say much about Acheron apart from having the same Japanese seiyu as Raiden Shogun and Raiden Mei from Honkai Impact and Genshin Impact, but her name could be taken from Lake Acheron, which is one of the five rivers of the underworld in Greek mythology. Acheron symbolizes the river of misery or 
or woe, and is for some reason both a lake and a river. Anyway, the other rivers to the underworld include the River Styx or River of Unbreakable Oaths, the Phlegathon or River of Fire, the Cocytus or Lamentation, and the Leith River of Forgetfulness. Acheron is also a member of the Galaxy Rangers who hunt evil and uphold justice of which was formed into a group of heroes that have defeated quite the number of powerful foes already. And we know of two other members so far, one named Loretta and the other named La Mancha. Or La Mancha? I don't know. La Mancha is an Arabic expression meaning an elevated plateau. But funnily enough, La Mancha is a wine region assigned through geographical indication in Spain. So maybe the leader of the Galaxy Rangers is also fond of wines. Although the Galaxy Rangers faded after dealing with Mr. Primitive and have lost their combat ability, we can hopefully know more from Acheron herself. Some of the members of the Galaxy Rangers could also be named after rivers to the underworld too. The Annihilation gang's Grand Duke, Ifrit, is one of the people invited to Penaconi, a descendant of the Phase Flame created by Circle, number 29 of the Genius Society. This Phase Flame is capable of moving to different worlds known as Phase Changing. The Duke Ifrit is only capable of teleportation, which is different from Phase Changing, but Ifrit might also be able to use more variations of Phase abilities. Ifrit's dream, however, is more than just a dream. It's a mission to destroy Panacani along with other worlds in their path to earning Nanook's gaze. Another likely guest is Sam of the Stellaron Hunters, a metal humanoid who seems to be the most straightforward out of the group. Very little is known about Sam, but we'll hopefully have more info on him once we get to Penacani. I've already talked about Black Swan and her background already, so we'll move on to the upcoming character, Dr. Ratio, a member of the Intelligentsia Guild that helped us with finding the Phase Flame, if you could still remember. His relations with Herta are still unknown, while one is an emanator of Noose, and the other a very talented Intelligentsia member, they are still both disciples of Noose. Moving on to Mr. Adventurine, he is an executive of the IPC's Strategic Investment Department and is a member of the Ten Stonehearts. Topaz is also a member of the Investment Department and was asked by Adventurine if she could join him in Panacani, of which Topaz has yet to decide. Their current leader, named Diamond, is head of both the department, the Ten Stonehearts, as well as an emanator of preservation. Every member of the Strategic Investment Department so far seems to be part of the Ten Stonehearts, and there are currently seven that we know of. So we may still have three unknown Stoneheart members. Now each member's name is taken from a specific mineral or stone, such as opal, obsidian, pearl, and jade. Now following Hoyo's naming conventions, maybe we might see a character named Gold within this game as well. Himiko as well as the Express's actual destination is finally on its way, and we can finally continue our Trailblaze mission to connect more worlds. Panacani was already known to us since 1.0, but we've simply been detoured to go to the Shanzo by the Stellaron Hunters. And wouldn't you know, there's another hunter in Panacani. Now apart from our continuation of our relationship with the hunters, I'm quite interested in what Himiko might have to say regarding Panacani and Shipe in general. The Beyond the Sky Choir is known to create pieces of music that can only be played on special phonographs. And Himiko is fond of her phonograph in the Express, as well as collecting songs for it. But that's still a floating theory that isn't exactly plausible yet. We've already heard of the Masked Fools before, when Dan Heng first left the Shanzo. He met and joined some of the Masked Fools before ending up in the Express. And the other visitor for Panacani, Sparkle, will introduce us to that faction's ins and outs. Funnily enough, Sparkle knows about Sampo and would have likely regularly met with him and the other members at the Tavern World's End, a gathering place for the Masked Fools filled with laughter and joy. Now, now, a memory bubble from within the old testing ground in Yarilo 6 mentions Sampo and Giovanni speaking of their ideals regarding elation, as well as mentioning a certain that person going to Panacani. This person is likely Sparkle after being invited to Panacani. Now we could expect the ever popular comedian ending up speaking and interacting with Sparkle as well as us the trailblazers in Panacani, but Sampo jokingly seems to not want to go to Panacani because of Sparkle. So they may have done something or know of events in the past. Or maybe Sparkle just hates Sampo, plain and simple. 
And there we go, everything I could find regarding Panacani, as well as every person that may be part of Panacani's events. I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment below, is Ifrit going to destroy the dream of Panacani, or is Black Swan going to take all of Panacani's memories first? Now, I've been trying to play more Star Rail recently because Acheron and Sparkle are basically my top waifu picks since Kafka came out, and Mr. Sunday as well as Miss Robin remind me of some characters from Arc Knights too. So I might as well make a lore video while I'm farming for Stellar Jades on the way. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!